Okay, okay. Thank you. Can you assign the cities for the best we could give you on the web? So I, I prepared my questions. Uh, so I, I ask you the question in English, and then uh, she you speak, and then she translates. Okay. And then I will put subtitles in, in the video. Oh, okay, great, thank you. Uh, Mr. Davis, the guy of the wolf was your first novel. Why did you choose to start from a wolf? Uh, well, it was it was actually came about because I was uh, I was listening to a radio story about wolves in which wolves were the baddies. Okay, and uh, I thought how wolves are always the baddies in, in Europe in particular. Uh, the very first baddie you ever come across as a child is the big bad wolf. Okay. And it's not true. Wolves are much uh, kinder animals and uh, family animals and uh, much more interesting than that. So I decided to tell a story in which I would get my own back on behalf of the wolves. So, uh, at, you know, uh, in, in Aesop's fables, the wolf is always just called the wolf. But in my book, the wolves have names and families and children and so forth. And the man who's hunting them is just called the hunter. So in the cry of the wolf, the hunter has the character of the wolf. So it's my revenge on the part of the wolf. Because, of course, in England we have no wolves. Or we killed the wolf hundreds of years ago, and nobody wants them back except me. Uh, can you describe us uh, Ben, the protagonist of the novel, the, the, the child? Ben. Well, you know, the, the, the idea of Ben is, is that he loves the wolves very much, but he's very proud of the wolves. And, uh, and the opening of the book is trying to shoot water rats, and uh, a little man comes along who uh, shoots much better than him, and he's really impressed, as children sometimes are, and uh, the man says that he's a professional hunter, and he goes all around the world killing animals, and Ben's very, very impressed, and asks him if he's here to hunt the wolves, and Ben shuts his mouth, because it's a big secret, nobody must know about the wolves, uh, but it turns this man is a hunter, and he is someone who is, who is determined to kill rare animals. And, uh, and so, of course, Ben has unleashed um, this terrible force of destruction on the wolves. And uh, it comes from uh, an interview, okay, that I remember from uh, a very early TV naturalist called Armand Dennis. And uh, he, he, in his biography, he spoke of how he was speaking with the King of Nepal. And uh, the King of Nepal hunted great Indian rhino. And when Armageddon said to him, but your majesty, you realize that if you keep hunting these creatures, very soon there will be none left. And the king replied, I think you will find, Mr. Dennis, that there are just enough to last me in my life. And of course, people at one point did take a great pride in killing rare animals. And some still do. So it was this idea of the hunters that he become the man who kills the last wolf. So Ben is put in the position where he loves the wolves, but he has also been indirectly the cause of the wolf's destruction. So this is his tragedy. This is also the story of the mortal combat. As in Melvin Moby Dick, the story of, uh, of the hunting is full of surprise. Can you tell us something about the, the last part of the book where the hunter and the, the wolf are fighting? Well, wouldn't I be giving away the story if I did that? Huh? Um, yeah, I mean, it's an interesting thing because um, uh, really I wanted, I wanted to talk about extinction because wolves are extinct in Britain, so that breed of wolf has gone forever. And um, so I wanted to talk about that, but extinction is so final that I did want the wolves to have their, have their day, okay? And uh, the hunter was so horrible that I wanted him to get to come up. <laughs> and um, the, the end of the book was the second thing that I wrote. Okay? The first bit was when the hunter was shooting Grey Cub's mother. And the, the first bit is when I'm shooting Grey Cub's mother. But the second bit was when the hunter, the wolf has chased the hunter into the sea. And uh, we're waiting to see, we're waiting to see what happens. And that's that. that um, that piece where suddenly it shifts from the wolf's viewpoint to the hunter's viewpoint. So he's trying to trying to swim around the peninsula to try and get round the wolf. That's uh, 
that was my um, that was my ending. And uh, I can't say what can I say what happened? I can't really. Can't. I'll give the book away, will I? Eh? It's not my job to tell you the end of my book. You've got to read it. Uh, last question. Um, what do you what were the reactions to the children, of the children to this book? Well, you know, they they, they liked it, you know. I think they, um, everybody has read uh, the stories with the big bad wolf in. So uh, there's a trick in the book which is just that it turns it on its head. So they all recognised um, where it came from in, in a literary sense, you know, that they all want to that. And uh, it's a very simple story of, um, of uh, destruction and revenge, and uh, uh, people like simple, strong stories. So, uh, you know, it has, you know, it was my very first book, uh, but I still get people coming up and telling me it's my best one. Um, that would be a bit, a bit of a shame, really, but uh, it's certainly one of, my, one of the ones that I'm most proud of uh, because of its, uh, its simplicity and its strength. And it was writing that book, really, that I, I came of age as a writer because before then I couldn't somehow get through. But with that one, I felt suddenly I found out how to, how to tell the stories. And also, I found out what my subject matter was, because before then, I'd been trying to write funny stories. <laughs> so that was a real thing for me. But it's, it's always had very good reactions. Uh, for adults and children, it's always been over my